Good morning, it's Friday, April 12, 2019. I'm Russell, and this is Rocky Road Devotions, a few minutes of help for today's journey. Our devotion today is entitled, He Was Crushed for Us, Part 2. Our scripture is Hebrews chapter 2. Because God's children are human beings made of flesh and blood, the Son also became flesh and blood. For only as a human being could he die, and only by dying could he break the power of the devil who had the power of death. Only in this way could he set free all who have lived their lives as slaves to the fear of dying. We also know that the Son did not come to help angels, he came to help the descendants of Abraham. Therefore, it was necessary for him to be made in every respect like us, his brothers and sisters, so that he could be our merciful and faithful high priest before God. Then he could offer a sacrifice that would take away the sins of the people. Since he himself has gone through suffering and testing, he is able to help us when we are being tested. In yesterday's devotion, I asked the question, how could it be God's good plan for his son, Jesus, to be crushed? In this morning's reading, the answer is rolled out so very plainly, it shouts, here I am, here's the answer. So, let's dig in with the writer of Hebrews this morning and rest in Lent's unchanging good news for all humanity that we've sinned, but there is a Savior. Let's explore three important facts about being crushed for us as a good plan of God. The first fact is that God is eternal. He never dies. This is the most easily accepted of the three. God's eternality makes sense if you hold Scripture as true at all. The creator of everything must have been there before everything else existed. We see this naturally, God having placed it in our DNA that he is before all. And even as children we understand this, we expect our parents will never die. As God always existed, so he always exists. A second important fact is that humans, slaves to sin, can't live. Again, faith in scripture's authenticity and accuracy opens this fact to us. In the opening chapters of Genesis, as soon as humans are created, they rebel. Humans, therefore, introduce death to an otherwise perfect environment. And as we pass along in our DNA characteristics of body, defects, hair, and eye color, we also pass along Adam's sin nature. We pass along the ungodlike ability to fear and die. And then a third important fact is that God came to exchange our death for his life. As God in heaven cannot die, the good plan of God to redeem his fallen but beloved creation, us, is for God to enter humanity to accept the ability to die. In short, in the manger in the 33 years that followed, God incarnate took on in every way possible our death. Hebrews chapter 4, this high priest of ours understands our weaknesses, for he faced all of the same testings we do, yet he did not sin. But Jesus didn't just passively take on or accept death, he defeated and will ultimately destroy death. Hear those familiar words you've heard at funerals so often, but hear them now as what began as a newborn in a borrowed birthing suite, rank with barnyard smells, and ultimately culminated in smashing the fear-filled chains of death that were trying to keep eternal God in a borrowed tomb. This was the other half of God's good plan, that which he accomplished, defeating death, he gives to all who turn to him in faith. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Then when our dying bodies have been transformed into bodies that will never die, this scripture will be fulfilled. Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is your victory? O death, where is your sting? For sin is the sting that results in death, and the law gives sin its power. But thank God, he gives us victory over sin and death through our Lord Jesus Christ. For you today, Lent is a time for looking at the big picture. Life, death, meaning. 
This is it. God's good plan, the best gift in the universe, life eternal. You chew on that as you hit the rocky road. Have a blessed day.